pause, maybe. Hi again. Okay, so you are look is the Wikipedia page. Wikipedia normally has some pretty good pictures on it. Um, I don't agree with going there for all of your information, but for the science, there's enough pretentious science people out there that they're making sure that stuff is pretty much correct for the most part. Okay, energy, nuclear coordinates is internuclear distance. Um, there's my V0, um, and then we've got uh, the larger, um, higher energy state. I will note. Um, all of you are probably very frustrated with me, and I'm so sorry. The double prime and prime notation, um, that is a very common vibrational notation associated with vibrational mode transitions and rotational mode transitions. Um, and so this by a uh, double prime represents the lower state, uh, prime represents the higher state. Um, and so from that, and actually I think it's, it's the initial state to final state, um, but that's where these prime and double primes come from. So thank you for bearing with me on using that notation. I'm sorry that there was a glitch in explaining it before. Go team. Okay, check out the Frank Condon principle. Which one of these, or which one of these matches this one? I know that the answer is already there, the blue line. So notice how there's the most overlap here. Go team. So then when there's a decay, so there's absorption, but when there's a decay, the most overlap that occurs is going to be down to the one that matches. So the matching is going to give you the, the wave function that overlaps the best such that you have a fluorescence decay back down. So just because an electron's excited, unless there's a place or a path for it to go, it's not going to go there, um, which is why you can learn a lot by exciting an electron in some way and then watching where it goes. Um, Thousands have found, made a career out of that. Um, anyway, so that's the Frank Condon principle. Really exciting. Um, I should say the farther over this moves, um, so let's say that the, um, the state is very far over, um, then you'd actually have what's called phosphorescence, um, which is the delayed decay. Um, actually, let me find a picture of that. I will stop, pause. Cool, welcome back. Okay, so here is a picture of um, the uh, excitation of uh, from low state to high state, and then you have um, absorption, and then all of these are non-radiative decay where the energy is leaving in the term of therm in the way of thermal energy via molecular vibrations. Given that those are quantized for solid state, this would be called phonon vibrations, um, which are again also quantized. But then once you have this, it reaches its lower vibrational state. This is the, the state that thousand percent majority of transitions from the high state to the low state are going to occur from the lowest vibrational state. And this is where you have fluorescence. The fact that you have a de delay in R, meaning you have this absorbed, much higher energy than this fluoresced. And then when it fluoresces down, you're going to have even more non-radiated decay until it goes back down. And when I mean non-radiative decay, it's not giving energy off in the form of a photon. Okay. Um, so you can learn a lot, just like I told you that you can learn a lot by comparing Raman and IR. You really, if you're doing any sort of absorption and looking at electronic transitions, it's really handy to look at both the absorption and the fluorescence combined. That gives you more of the complete pictures of what these little molecules are trying to say. Okay. So here you have phosphorescence. When you have an absorption, and then you have, via the frank Condon principle, S0 to S1, then you have non-radiative decay. Again, this uh, vibrational state is going to overlap the best with the ground vibrational state. Then you have non-radiative decay. If you have an additional quantum state close by an electronic state that the electron could occupy and any of these electron states overlap like that one, electrons are waves. They don't care if there's an energy state that's the same plane or it's the same level, they're going to take it because it's a wave function. It's going to occupy any of the, it's going to occupy itself to, to be that way or to, to um, have that energy. So if there's another energy close to it, there's no difference between this wave function and this wave function, i.e. they're the same wave function. So this is where you can have what's called intersystem crossing. And that happens again when the electronic states overlap. 
then now you're still in an excited electronic state. You're going to continue to or uh, non-radiative decay back down. Um, and then this is where you have phosphorescence occur. And this is when you've had a singlet to a triplet state transfer. Go team. So a singlet to a triplet, phosphorescence, it decays. And then from this state, actually it'll be in this state, non-radiative, 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 non-radiative. This is how glow in the dark works. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff you can learn from that. Um, cool. Last but not least, um, sweet. So when you have transitions, you're going to have different fingers. So here's the absorption spectra. Um, you can have different fingers associated. So here's absorption versus wave number. Um, or wave numbers going that way, which means wavelengths going that way. Um, and so you've got uh, all of these little fingers here are going to be associated with uh, the fine structure, which means you're going from electronic state zero to one. And just like with vibrational rotational, you're going to have zero to four vibrational state. This is zero to three, zero to two. Now this is not the same as an overtone. That's different. Overtones would be within these states. That's a much smaller energy difference. Um, so that would be way small wave number. We're in much higher wave number with uh, electronic absorption. Um, and so then you'd have fluorescence. And so notice how all fluorescence are occurring from the lowest vibrational state of the higher electronic state um, going down. So this little, this little pick, peak, this little piggy went to market. I've been saying that with the kid, go team. But this little piggy came from this transition and this little piggy came from this transition, go team. Um, but what's fascinating about this, look at the mirroring image. They're not quite the same, but they're not quite different. Um, and you can learn a lot by comparing the two of what do the different transition or what do the different um, vibrational states look like in the two excited state or in the excited state compared to the ground state. And then phosphorescence is its own thing. Um, kind of similar, much more different because, of course, you have this triplet state, which is going to be when you have unpaired electrons um, in two different states, much different. Um, but still a lot to learn about the relationship between this state of the triplet state back down to the original ground state. Go team. Those pictures are in the notes. Um, they've been posted, which by the way, all the notes are on Moodle. Hopefully you have, found, you most likely have found them. Um, that's all I have because this video is already quite long um, with the Frank Condon principle and phosphorescence and fluorescence, both of which are kind of luminescence. Um, cool. If you have questions, let me know. Um, that's all I have. Uh, again, with electronic transitions, we're not spending as much time there. In all honesty, it's because I'm a vibrational spectroscopist. Um, but you will be interpreting some absorption spectrum and fluorescence. Uh, in class, I'm going to be playing with an applet um, and having you all play with it as well. Go team. That's all I got. Bye.